Before well, I Kathy, came. Kathy, remember the, the beautiful profile that I had taken of myself and put in the hat for the makeup man? No, I was so freaked out working with everybody <laughs> in the beginning, and Jimmy knew just how to get me. He, the, I think it was my first. Are you going to tell us? Gonna... Okay. Did why you know about this? I know oh, about it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell, but I'm surprised that you're going to tell. Jimmy, it. Well, you because I'm not surprised that you would bring it up. Pardon the pun. But well, I, I, I was the one who brought it up. Were you really naked? He was so <laughs> naked. No, he had his gun belt on. Didn't you have your gun belt in your hat? He had his gun belt and his hat on. Let me tell you. Oh, and his cowboy boots. Does that count? <laughs> now, they could bleep this out. The makeup man used to hold the hat like this and make up your eyes. Well, of course, we're jerking our head around, talking to people. And they said, would you hold still? Would you hold still? Finally, put a Playboy magazine centerfold in the center of the hat. Well, that got my attention. <laughs> and I thought, well, but poor Kathy. What about poor Kathy? She had nothing to look at. Yes. So <laughs> I went home, me. took a Polaroid shot of myself with my hat and my cowboy boots on, and they put it in the hat. Now, you fade out. The next morning, I forgot all about it. We're out there. I hear Kathy scream. I'm not the way it was a good scream or a bad scream. <laughs> was it a good scream? It was. I about fainted. It was so funny. <laughs> and I'm not going to explain that anymore. <laughs> so, I dare say. Sorrel Book had had a career as, you know, Yale School of Drama, yes. brilliant actor, Shakespeare, Broadway. Right. Career, we fixed that. But he had more fun <laughs> doing Boss Hog. Oh, I know. And, 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 and brought more joy. But, you know, with Sorrel. It made would, more money. When, when he would go out and do personal appearances, he was Boss Hog. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't go as Sorrel Book, he went as Boss Hog, of and he course. put the costume on at 9 o'clock in the morning and maybe see thousands of people and never get the slightest, not only not get out of character, but be working improvisationally right. the whole time in character. And uh, he, he, he went it. out just about every weekend. The guy worked seven days a week. Well, I remember one of the first times I ever rehearsed with Boss, like you were saying, before the scene. It was when uh, Andy, Andrew Johnson was on the show playing the bad guy, the guy from uh, Dirty Harry. So I sat down in the chair and they started, uh, started running their lines in Japanese. Because <laughs> oh Boss was you know, a brilliant That's man. Right. He spoke six I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant man. And, and Andy uh, also knew Japanese. So they started running the scene in Japanese. And whenever my part came, they just stop and look at me. I'd throw the line in English. You know, Denver, Denver Pyle was a, uh, a sort of a, he was like an anchor. You know, I mean, that guy was so solid and so consistent, so experienced. Uh, and he was, you know, the, he was order. You know, Boss Hog and Brasco were the law, which, which in Hazard County was, you know, what it was. It, it, but. Denver Powell, as Uncle Jesse, was order. He was tradition. Yep. And, he was uh, family. And he family. taught, I think, not just the Dukes and the rest of us around there, but generations of kids how to behave. Right yep. from wrong, good from bad, a real moral authority. It was a great way to be able to, to, uh, to help raise your kids. And yeah, there was the driving and all that sort of things. But I've had so many people now over the years come back and say that they are they were so thankful to have a safe place to go on Friday night that actually helped them with their kids on Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. The things that I've done been involved in since it never ceases to amaze me how people just don't know how to deal with cars and cameras, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you spoiled us. I mean when I when I look at the show or I or do something else and I think, you know, gone are the days of the beautiful fallen oak tree and the water with the ducks on it and the gen I mean it's just so so beautiful. Remember those great shots? We'd have the, the trees down and there'd be, remember one where the, the ducks were on the lake and then all of a sudden the General Lee comes Lake. flying over and the ducks are, ducks are just getting out of the way. And... <laughs> there was one essential element to the Dukes of Hazard that people often overlook because, uh, you know, Roscoe and Boss and then you and the, not just the camaraderie. Yeah. <laughs> not just the camaraderie. No. No. More than that. <laughs> no. I'm talking about Paul Baxley. Yes. And Paul Baxley and his guys created the tone of this show, the pace of this show, the spirit of this show. They did it down in Georgia. And by the time we came out of there, there was an extraordinary thing happening. He took the chemistry of the cast yeah. and the fun of the idea and made it, brought it to life. Him and those stunt guys, Gary and Craig and Junior and Henry and Bob Orison, mm -hmm. uh, deserve credit. 
Oh, absolutely. for making us look absolutely. good week after week, and and to me it was yeah. his show. Yeah. They were fabulous. These guys did more stunts before lunch than most people do in a week, and there was a shot where the the General Lee was driving through a ravine somewhere, and the two police cars came up and jumped on either side of the creek and then oh. hit, boom, oh, and then and spun and then landed. Yes. And the General Lee, boom, right there. Yeah. Yes. You had that to was bring in specialists for that. I love Georgia. I thought I it was just Georgia was great. Georgia's a beautiful state. Didn't have to build anything, do anything. Jump the car through a barn, they'd say, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We're going to turn it down anyway. Yeah. Help us out. Oh, yeah. Oh, no Never, and all the people come out and help you know, like out here, you know, you got to pay them 50 million bucks to turn around. <laughs> there would drive the horses, the cattle, the cows, yeah. everything. It was just absolutely. <laughs> Jimmy and I were in the police car and it flipped over, right? And suddenly, and the car is still smoking and Gary jumped out and everything. And I look around and here comes Jimmy Bass toward, the, I thought, oh, I said, Jimmy, are you going to do this? And he said, yeah. I said, Oh my God! And I turned to Paul and I said, "It's still smoking. <laughs> it could catch fire." And he and you said, "Peg, we only had enough gas in to flip it over like a half a cup. <laughs> it's not good." And I said, "Oh God!" <laughs> and then you said, "Baby, you can do it." <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did Anybody it. calls me baby. <laughs> Hi, Paul. No, listen, she didn't back away <laughs> from anything. we did it. And Paul had so much fun doing close-ups, if any of you recall. Not to no. me, he never okay, did. Okay, well, then let me just tell you Not to you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so he 